Hey y'all, this is Shannon again. This is video number five on using the mini bracelet slash bookmark loom. And this one is on finishing with fringe. So there are two different ways you can fin, I'm sure there are more than two different ways, but there are two different ways I'm gonna demonstrate how to finish with fringe today. The first one is just tying knots. And the second one is utilizing a technique called hem stitch that is used in a lot of weaving. On most of my little pieces, I've used hem stitch. It's really great. This is a really wonderful kind of scale to practice on. It's not a difficult technique, but it does need some practice. And um, it locks in your stitches so you can have fringe without having to knot and without worrying about um, everything getting loose on your edges. So if you're going to tie knots, there are a couple different ways to do it. Overhand knots are the best aesthetically and, um, you know, kind of locking in stitches wise, but you need quite a long tail to do overhand knots. This does not, this is not quite enough to comfortably do overhand knots unless you're really, really good at really small scale um, manipulation, which due to a little bit of arthritis, I am not. Um, so overhand knots are the best and you want to have a nice long tail to do them. When I am knotting anything on a loom, instead of just cutting everything off at once, I like to keep things still on tension because I think it helps me to be able to um, work more easily if things are still on a little bit of tension. So if I'm doing an overhand knot, again, I wanna have a nice long tail and I'm gonna cut two because that's what I'm gonna do my knots over two warp ends. And I do my knot and a good trick on knots is to use your metal needle and kind of hold the knot down close to your woven piece, close to your fabric, and then slowly tug and that'll help the knot stay low and not, <laughs> not get knotted up higher um, because you want your knot to be nice and snug against your fabric because it's holding it in. Another technique you can do, it's not as aesthetically pleasing, but it's a little easier, and especially if you have short warp threads like down here, is you can just do a plain old double knot. Now, when you do a double knot, your ends are splayed more so than they are with a overhand knot. Uh, so it's not as aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing, but it's easier, especially for your lower warp threads, which are close to impossible to do with an overhand knot. So I will tie this one to, and a single knot is just not as secure as it could be. So those are the ways I do knotting. And there's something kind of cute about how it's splayed out too. Um, so that's how I do knotting for finishing my bookmark looms. The technique I really like to do, as I said, is called hem stitch. And I've done it down here on this side. So you can see the front and the back hem stitch, everything. I was able to take out my cardboard early on this one because everything is nice and secure. So that's what it does is it locks everything in there. When you do hem stitch, you want to have an end that is at least four times as long as the width of your woven piece. And you want to have a tapestry needle. The tapestry needle that came in your kit is perfect for this. When you do hem stitch, you can go from either side, <clears throat> the left or the right. It's kind of a dealer's choice type of thing. And the basic process of hem stitch is you're going to be wrapping around stitches. You're going to be crossing from the back 
across however many stitches you're doing your fringe on, coming up however many rows down that correlates with how many stitches you've crossed your fringe on, or you're doing your fringe on, and then you're going to go straight up and repeat. So I'm going to demonstrate that because it didn't make a lot of sense, I'm sure. Um, but I'm going to do two warp thread fringe. I'm going to go around two fringe stitches. I'm going to go down two rows and I'm going to come up. I'm going to go down three rows. I'm going to come up between the two fringe stitches I wrapped around and the next two. And then I'm going to come straight up. So you see that I've wrapped around these fringe stitches. I've gone down in the back and I've come up and I've gone straight up between these two. Now I'm going to come up again on the next two stitches. I'm going to go back down because I want to wrap around those two fringe stitches and then I'm going to cross over in the back. I'm going to cross over from here to here. Can you see that? And so what I did was I came out, wrapped around, crossed over those two stitches that I'm making my fringe out of that I had wrapped and came up between those two and the next one. And so I'm right here in the center, two or three rows down, whatever you prefer. Generally speaking, on a bigger piece, you would do like four stitch or four warp end fringe. And so you would go down four. This one is two, so I like to go down three because I like it to be kind of buried in the fabric a little more. So generally speaking, you do want to do the same amount, but for this one, because it's on such a small scale, I like to do a slightly fewer. Okay, so you come up right between these two, and then I'm going to go back down between those two same stitches with my needle. And then I'm going to come up on the right side of the next two. And again, this can go from right to left or left to right, wherever you finish or wherever is more comfortable. And I'm going to go around those next two stitches. And so you can see that they're being pulled. These little sets are being pulled because they're being made into fringe groups. And then these are still just straight up fringe. So then I'm going to, again, come up, making sure it's between the fringe group I just created and my next stitch. See, I've created another fringe stitch or fringe group. And then I'm going to go down between that fringe group I just created and the next stitch. I'm going to come up on the right side of my next fringe group, my next two stitches. And I'm going to go back to wrap around. I'm going to come up between the fringe group I just created and my next stitch. I'm going to go straight up to go back down between those two. I'm going to come up and around and wrap around it. And then come up between the next two. Go back down come up between the next fringe group and the stitch next to it, wrap that fringe group like that, come up between them, and then go back down in that same, between those same two. Now this at the end, it's a, oops, it's a little different at the end because you don't have a stitch on the other side to go around. So what I generally do, I wrap around those two and then I come up between that last stitch and the edge like 
this. And then I usually go up so I can slip down and weave the end through a couple rows. Don't want to pull too tight, but that's it. And then I can snip right at the edge of the fabric and I'm done. So now that I'm done, these stitches are all locked in. So I can just cut straight across because I'm done with the weaving and the finishing for this piece. On the bottom, sometimes what I like to do if I wanna have longer fringe, I will take it off kind of row by row and cut between my fringe loop so I can have a longer fringe. And then on the top, I can cut all the way across right here and then I can trim it to the right length when I'm all done. And then again, I can take my loops off. I have all these loops that I just need to trim. I have this that I need to trim where I added new yarn. I need to snip close to the edge because I've overlapped so it's locked in. I don't have my beginning tails or my end tails because I used them when I created my fringe and did my hem stitch. So I'm pretty much done. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks so much.